OK, let's get some reaction from Africa, further reaction to this. Chris Atim is a health economist based in Accra in Ghana, which is one of the African countries signed up to the Pfizer Health Accord. I agree that it is good news. I mean, for a major manufacturer of medical products to make this announcement. But it is, you know, there are some concerns um, you know, in the broader picture with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, first of all, it comes, you know, uh, well, well, well after the peak of the pandemic, uh, when now the demand for their products is, you know, in the West, uh, you know, and, and at least in the advanced countries anyway, is, uh, you know, it's well below what it was before. And now they can begin to, you know, talk about um, the concerns of less developed countries. Does that annoy but, you? Does that make you, does, uh, of make you feel does. annoyed? Because also the problem will be, if we have another pandemic, even if those drugs are not being sold right. for profit, will you have access to them in Ghana, Rwanda? That is the Rwanda? main question, exactly. It's not just a cost. It's not just a question of whether they're selling them for profit. It's also when will they actually be available? Will they be, will we be put on the same pedestal, the same footing as the other countries when it comes to you know the manufacture and distribution of those drugs? And that is um, and vaccines, for that matter. And, and, and that you know, speaks to the broader architecture of the pharmaceutical industry, uh, globally, uh, of which Pfizer, Pfizer is, a, is, is a major part, uh, where I mean, they have lobbied very strongly for the TRIPS agreement under the WTO, which makes it difficult for countries like India, South Africa, Senegal, to actually be able to manufacture these products um, you know, uh, in, a in a timely way to satisfy the needs of countries that are not being looked after. That's the point. It's not that they it, are competing. Is that the solution for, it's, as it's, you it's, mentioned there, for countries like... Ghana, for those countries that you mentioned there, that Pfizer basically hands over the way to make these products and then yes. you can make them on the ground yourself. But that's not exactly. going to happen, that, is it? That, that is a better, that is exactly, but that's a better solution than what they are, they are talking about. It's certainly better in terms of the equity they are talking about. They said that they are trying to address equity. But, well, the way to address global equity is not to say, you know, you sell them for uh, on a non-profit basis, but without telling us if we would be put on the same priority basis as uh, your home countries who are demanding these drugs. And some of them even can make laws to prevent you from exporting the drugs, as we've seen before. So, you know, it's really important that we are able to manufacture these drugs when we need them, especially on an emergency basis. The TRIPS makes that impossible, difficult at the very least to actually manufacture them on an emergency basis. And we saw during the pandemic that we couldn't even do that, you know. Um, but the drug you know, companies they, would say, the likes of Pfizer, that if they did that, countries like Ghana don't have the capability to manufacture the drug at the moment, that you wouldn't be able to do it. Ah, No, but we are in a better place when we are dealing with South Africa and India, you know, and Senegal. Senegal has the, the capacity as well. And, some, and, and indeed, actually, if that were the possibility was to even be open. I, I know that more countries, including Ghana, actually would step up to say we will also want to be able to manufacture this. Ghana has always talked about it. For because we are you know, asking ourselves, suppose there are really deadly virus emerges that is doing ravaging our populations and as well as the West, and in a way that is really unlike say the COVID one. The COVID one was bad enough, but I mean it's suppose it's worse than that. And people actually dying in their droves. Will we have to wait until they have satisfied their demands uh, in the advanced countries before we actually get considered? Or can we start doing something? And that, the question is, what can we be capable of doing? What can we possibly be able to do on our own to start addressing the needs of our populations that you know, enable us to actually begin to also tackle our problems on our own without having to depend, depend entirely on uh, the charity of the pharmaceutical companies? And charity has not been their, their, their most important or their strongest suit uh, in their history. The pharmaceutical companies would say that they are businesses, they need to make money, and that it, it is governments that have to sort out those problems. They make the drugs, they should be able to sell them at whatever price they want. So in a way, Pfizer could say, this is a very bold step that they're taking. You know, I wouldn't deny that. There are, as far as that is concerned, as a manufacturing company, but what I'm talking about is a broader architecture in which it's not just, they are not the only players. I mean, when we talk about the, the, the health equity and the problems, you know, of, uh, of the world, of, 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 you know, populations, you know, in our kind of countries, we are talking about the architecture in which, in which both these companies and their governments also are, have responsibilities. And in governments in particular have responsibilities. And just as we do have responsibilities for our population, where we must look at not just the profits of pharmaceutical companies, but also the lives 
of people, in which case they may, and, and there are circumstances in which, you know, governments can override, you know, the concerns of the private companies to make, to make sure that lives are saved. Chris Atom there with his reaction to that announcement by Pfizer. 